Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve, problems rather, that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 158. Please turn to it, page 158, and today is our lesson number 283. The problems that you see are there on page number 158 are the exact same problem that appeared on the exact same page number on the, in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved all the problems from first edition, we are just redoing them at a little bit of a faster pace. If you need to watch the original video at a slower pace, uh, if you need to watch the solution that is uh, at a slower pace, you can watch the original video, which is something that you're going to find on day number 62. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 10. As I said, this is the same exact thing that we did on day number 62. We are given a parallelogram, O, P, Q, R. O, P, Q, R, we are told, is a parallelogram. We are also told that the coordinates of point P are 2 and 4. We are told that coordinates of points point Q are 8 and 6. The question is what are the coordinates of point R? And here is our parallelogram. It looks something like this. This looks something like this. Let me redraw it a little bit better. Close enough. It's close enough. We are told that the point P, point P has a coordinate of 2 and 4. We are also told that this point has a coordinate of 8 and 6. 8 and 6. Well, the very first thing we need to realize here is that, the very first thing we need to realize here is that this distance that we see here this distance as we see here is the exact same distance as this one even though it does not look the same it has to be the exact same distance and the the y coordinates okay, listen carefully the y coordinates of point P is 4 and the y coordinates of point Q is 6 since the y coordinate of point P is 4 and the y coordinate of point, point Q is 6 this distance that we see here must be 2 which is the exact same distance as this one at the bottom. That tells us that the y coordinate of point R has to be 2. Now let's worry about the x coordinate. I shouldn't have put all of that there because we don't want to make it too crowded. So we already know that the y coordinate of point R has to be 2. Now let's worry about the x coordinate. This distance that we see here, let's call it x, this distance that we see here, from here to here, let's call it y, and this distance, let's call it z. What do we notice? We notice that x plus y plus z, x plus y plus z has to be the x-coordinate of q, which is 8. We also notice that x equals z x equals z because the this distance here the x coordinate of point p and this distance are the same since since x equals z and we know that x equals 2 
x, x is, uh, distance x is the x coordinate of point P, which is 2, since x equals z, and x also equals 2, that means z equals 2. Therefore, if x equals 2 and z equals 2, y must equal 4. y must equal 4, which is this part right here. This distance is 4, which means this distance from here to here is 2 plus 4, which is 6. So it is 6 and 2. 6 and 2. That's it. That's all there is. Now, like I said, if you don't like it, if you thought that this was going a little bit too fast, that I did it in a little bit of a haste, it was by design. If you need to go at a slower pace, you can watch the original video on day 62. That's it, we're done. Let's do the next one. Number 11. Number 11. Number 11 is something that we did on day number 63, and it goes something like this. We are told that the relationship between the area of a circle A, area, the relationship between the area A of a circle and the circumference C is given by this relationship that they give us here. They tell us that A equals K times C squared. K times C squared. And the question simply is what's the value of K? What's the value of k? Let's see what we can do. Well, a is the area of the circle, which we know is equals to pi r squared. C, we know is circumference of a circle, any circle, which is equal to 2 pi r. So we can substitute back in here. So a, we are told, which is pi r squared, has to equal k times the square of the circumference. And circumference is this part right here. So it's 2 times pi times i. We take a square of that. Open the parentheses here. So we get 2 squared, which is 4 pi squared and then r squared. We are interested in solving for k. So let's multiply both sides by 4 times pi squared times r squared. So here we have pi times r squared over 4 times pi squared times r squared. So everything drops out from here. This entire part drops out and we're left with k. And k would equal to well, what do we see? We see r squared on the top, and we see r squared on the bottom, and we see pi divided by pi squared, so the pi drops out, and it's just 4 over pi. 1 over 4 pi. The answer is 1 over 4 pi. That's all. Tomorrow we will do problem number 12, which is a very nasty problem. It's not a straightforward problem. I don't want to do it right now because it's going to be a little bit, if I, if I were to do that, that the video will become a little bit too long. We'll do problem number 12 separately. It's the exact same problem that we did on day number 64, if you're interested in watching the original solution. But the original solution is going to be a little bit longer, because it goes at a slow, slower pace. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.